I want to talk to you today about something that's been getting a lot of attention recently, and that's AI, artificial intelligence, specifically these AI chatbots that have been getting a lot of press about all the wonderful things they can do, like write a letter for you or tell you a story. I've heard AI can plan your vacation, write your wedding vows, co-author your academic paper, apparently, and maybe even compose music somehow. But what I wanted to know is, can they do philosophy? Actually, to be perfectly honest, I didn't really want to know that. I wasn't even thinking about it, at least not at first. I had heard about the OpenAI chatbot, ChatGPT, which I'm sure at some point I'll refer to as ChatGPS. Uh, I did hear about it when it was released about four months ago, but I was pretty much ignoring it, though it, it did turn out to be kind of hard to ignore since people were using it and talking about it and it was getting mentioned all over the place. So eventually I just couldn't avoid it anymore and last month I decided to have a look at it myself because I was interested in its ability to do philosophy. And my first thought was to ask it about Hegel. I thought it would be interesting to be able to talk to something, a computer, a chatbot that had access to vast stores of text by and about Hegel that could draw material together from disparate sources and make unexpected connections between different areas of Hegel's thought. That was my hope, anyway. I guess I imagined it would work kind of like a computer chess program where it runs through millions and millions of moves in advance or whatever Deep Blue was doing when it was playing against Garry Kasparov which I guess means that in this scenario, I'm Gary Kasparov and the chatbot is Deep Blue. Except that, unlike Kasparov, I was actually looking forward to being outmatched by the computer. I was hoping to be just blown away by its encyclopedic knowledge of Hegel's encyclopedia and everything else he wrote, while Kasparov went into his rematch with Deep Blue thinking he was going to prove that man was stronger than machine. And it turns out we were both in for a surprise. So about a month ago, I found the OpenAI chatbot online, created an account, and then I was on this page where there's a box that you can start typing into. And if you don't know what to type, uh, I thought this was funny, they have some suggestions to get you started, like ask the chatbot to explain quantum computing in simple terms, or plan a 10-year-old's birthday party. I don't know which one of those sounds like more fun, but I didn't want to get distracted. I needed to keep focused because I had come here with a specific goal in mind, which was to see how intelligent this artificial intelligence really was, specifically as applied to philosophy. So I followed its lead and asked it to explain Hegel's dialectic in simple terms. I mean, if it can explain quantum computing in simple terms or plan a 10-year-old's birthday party. I was definitely curious to hear what it had to say about Hegel's dialectic, and this is what happened. So after you type your request in the box, it starts feeding out its response, and I probably should have gotten a computer voice to read this part, but I'm just going to read it for you myself. The chatbot replied, Hegel's dialectic is a way of thinking about how ideas change and develop over time. It is based on the idea that every idea contains within itself its opposite, and that these opposing forces interact and eventually resolve themselves into a new idea. Okay, interesting. That's probably not the worst way to start talking about Hegel's thought, but then we get this. The dialectic consists of three stages, the thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. So already we're going downhill. The thesis is the original idea, the antithesis is the opposite idea, and the synthesis is the new idea that arises from the interaction of thesis and antithesis. So that was the unexpectedly early end uh, right there to my thinking that AI might have something new or interesting to say about Hegel. I immediately wondered, where was it getting this stuff? Uh, if it had been able to read just one book by, or even about Hegel, it shouldn't have come up with this thesis, antithesis, synthesis nonsense, which I'm just going to abbreviate as TAS from now on, since it's a mouthful to say, and unfortunately it's going to be coming up again, which has been debunked since the mid-20th century, at least, meaning that no one seriously discusses Hegel in these terms anymore. This isn't even on Hegel's Wikipedia page. Uh, or I should say that uh, actually it is on Hegel's Wikipedia page, but only to say that it's been debunked, that this isn't anything Hegel ever said himself, nor is it a legitimate way to discuss what Hegel actually did say, but it looks like 
somehow the chatbot missed that part. But I decided to give it a way out. I, I asked, does Hegel actually discuss TAS and his philosophy? And amazingly, the chatbot says, yes, Hegel does discuss TAS and his philosophy. Hegel's dialectical method involves the movement from a thesis to its opposite, the antithesis, and then the synthesis of the two into a higher level of understanding. Which left me wondering, what is this thing talking about? I mean, uh, I think it must have gotten this stuff from a TikTok video or something. So uh, I ask it, where exactly does Hegel discuss TAS and his philosophy? And it says, as an AI language model, I have been trained on a vast corpus of texts, including books, articles, and other documents. That appears doubtful. The information about Hegel's dialectical method and TAS comes from various sources, various dubious sources, apparently, including uh, Hegel's own work, such as Phenomenology of Spirit, and secondary sources, such as academic articles and books on philosophy. My response is based on a synthesis, uh, an interesting choice of words in this context, a synthesis of this information and is intended to provide a general overview of Hegel's ideas. Okay, so the bot is claiming that it's by a synthesis of books, articles, and other documents that it came up with a TAS interpretation of Hegel. I don't actually believe that, but uh, I went along with it and I asked, can you tell me where in the phenomenology Hegel discusses TAS? And uh, a, a very chipper chatbot replied, sure, Hegel's, Hegel discusses TAS throughout the phenomenology of spirit, but perhaps the most famous and detailed example can be found in the section on the master-slave dialectic. Now, the bot actually says more than that. It goes on to explain why the, uh, this so-called master-slave dialectic is such a great example of TAS, but I'm, I'm truncating that because we've just run into another problem. Maybe not as serious as TAS, but if you've read Hegel's phenomenology, which the bot clearly hasn't, then you know that Hegel does not refer to a master-slave dialectic, nor does he even use the words master or slave at all. So technically, there is no master-slave dialectic, nor could there be, because apparently unbeknownst to the bot, a dialectic for Hegel isn't actually about two separate things, like a thesis and antithesis, or master and slave. Something the bot needs to learn is that if you're talking about two separate things, you're probably not talking about dialectic. In most cases, that's a dichotomy. While a dialectic is one thing, or maybe we should say it's one thing that's dialectical, and in this case, what the bot is actually referring to is the dialectic of self-consciousness. Derempted, if, if that's a word, I think it is, or uh, divided, we could say, between the contradictory conditions of lordship and bondage, or mastery and servitude, depending on your translation. Back to the bot, however, I wasn't finished talking to ChatGPT just yet because I wanted to ask it if Hegel actually mentions TAS in the text of phenomenology at all, which hasn't been settled yet since so far we've just seen that the bot is interpreting what it, but not Hegel, calls the master-slave dialectic as an example of TAS. So I told the bot that I looked in the phenomenology and I couldn't find any reference in the text to thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. And the bot's response surprised me again since this time it apologized. It said, I apologize for the confusion. You are correct that the terms thesis, antithesis, and synthesis are not explicitly mentioned in the Phenomenology of Spirit by Hegel, which is interesting, but uh, apparently not significant enough to the chatbot to prevent it from saying initially that TAS was in the text. Uh, then it went on. Instead, the dialectical process is described and illustrated through various examples and discussions throughout the book. The master-slave dialectic is one of the most famous examples of Hegel's dialectical method, but there are many other examples throughout the book. So uh, what's happened here is that we've run into another problem, which is dialectical method. Just like there's no master-slave dialectic, Hegel doesn't actually have a dialectical method either. Saying dialectical method makes it sound like Hegel had devised a method of applying some kind of formula, like TAS, to all manner of subject matter, for example, masters and slaves, when Hegel, in fact, argues specifically against doing that sort of thing, because if Hegel really did have any kind of method, it was really just to stand back and get out of the way of thought, because for him, it's thought itself 
that's dialectical rather than some way of thinking we apply to it. For Hegel, thought exhibits its own inner dialectic, an imminent manner of unfolding as distinct from the application of some external formula or what he calls a lifeless schema. So I asked it, are you aware that TAS is an outmoded interpretation of Hegel's dialectic? And it answered, yes, I am aware that there have been criticisms of the traditional interpretation of Hegel's dialectical method that involves a three-step process of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Some scholars argue that this interpretation is too simplistic. Actually, I think it's pretty much everyone at this point, but uh, it says some scholars argue that this interpretation is too simplistic and does not fully capture the complexity of Hegel's thought. They suggest that the dialectical process in Hegel's work is more nuanced and multifaceted, involving multiple stages of development and a more dynamic relationship between the various elements of the dialectic. And uh, there's just a little bit more. It uh, concludes, despite these criticisms, the concept of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis remains a useful heuristic for understanding Hegel's dialectical method and has been influential in shaping later philosophical and social theories. Now, I, want, I wanted to quote that response in full because it's definitely right about that last point about shaping later philosophical and social theories because even though TAS isn't actually Hegelian, Karl Marx was someone who held this thesis-antithesis view of Hegel leading to who knows what potential problems within Marxism itself, none of which we're going to be getting into here. But uh, I will mention that even though Marx did not come up with this inaccurate view of Hegel himself, some people argue that he is responsible for popularizing it. But getting back to the bot, I still wanted to try to focus it on dialectic. That was my original question, after all. And uh, I didn't like the way it was proceeding. Remember, I hadn't brought up Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit, which is an undeniably great book in the history of philosophy, but it's also an early work by Hegel that's not actually part of his mature philosophical system. So I tried to get past phenomenology by asking the bot if it had read Hegel's major work, The Science of Logic, a much more radical and revolutionary book since it's essentially Hegel's demolition job on all of classical Aristotelian logic as it had stood for over 2,000 years. But when I asked the bot if it had read The Science of Logic, this is what it told me, surprising me again. As an AI language model, I don't have the ability to read texts in the same way that humans do. However, my training data includes a wide range of texts, including Hegel's Science of Logic, and I can provide information and answer questions based on that training. Okay, so uh, it just threw out some bait there, so I decided to take the bait and ask it what, it, uh, what Hegel says about dialectic in Science of Logic, and it said, Hegel's Science of Logic is a complex philosophical work that explores the nature of knowledge, reality, and their interrelationships. In it, he develops his concept of dialectical reasoning, which he views as the fundamental method for understanding the development of ideas and concepts. Again, that's really not a bad start, but uh, then we get this. According to Hegel, dialectic is a process of logical development that involves the synthesis of opposing or contradictory ideas. This process begins with a thesis or proposition, which is then challenged by an antithesis or counterproposition, and the two opposing ideas are then reconciled in a, in a synthesis, which becomes the new thesis, and the process begins again. As, as you can see, it's uh, I can barely get to the end of this chat session, and uh, this indeed is where I ended the session and gave up on my short-lived dream of AI-assisted philosophical research for now anyway, because this really seemed like a dead end until a week or two ago, that is, when I read that Google was getting into the chatbot game itself. I had never heard of OpenAI, but I have, of course, heard of Google, who for some reason decided to name their chatbot Bard, like it's good at writing plays or sonnets or something. So I got on the waiting list, and a day or two later, I was invited to register and get into Bard to see if it was any better at philosophy than ChatGPT. And like ChatGPT, Bard also had some suggestions for getting started, including how can I incorporate more high-protein vegan options into my diet? Which uh, seems like an interesting introduction to AI chat, I guess, but uh, instead of asking it about protein, 
or poetry. I wanted to find out what Bard had to say about Hegel, of course, so I asked it to explain Hegel's philosophy in simple terms, and it said, Hegel's philosophy is a complex and difficult one, but I will try to explain it in simple terms. Okay, so I guess we've been warned, and it continued. Hegel believed that the world is constantly evolving and changing, and that this process of change is driven by a dialectical process. Okay, go on. He argued that every idea or thesis, so here we go again, has an opposite Anti opposite or antithesis, and that these two forces are in constant conflict with each other. This conflict leads to a synthesis, which is a new idea or thesis that incorporates the best elements of thesis and antithesis. Okay, so obviously we're back to that same old non-Hegelian stuff, so again I decided to ask where it had gotten this information, and it said, I got this information from a variety of sources, including Hegel's own writings, such as his Encyclopedia Logic and Phenomenology of Spirit. Well, we know that's not true. Uh, secondary sources, such as books and articles about Hegel's philosophy, uh, which also isn't likely. Uh, online sources, such as websites and videos about Hegel's philosophy. And I also used my own understanding of Hegel's philosophy to synthesize the information from these sources. And there we see that word again, synthesize. Remember that ChatGPT also told us that it was creating a synthesis out of different Hegel-related material, and now Bard is saying it's using its own understanding of Hegel's philosophy to synthesize a TAS reading of Hegel, or I should say non-reading of Hegel, because we know that Hegel does not talk about TAS in his encyclopedia, or phenomenology, or anything else he wrote and also that there are not a lot of books about Hegel that use that framework either. But uh, Bard also mentioned websites and videos, and uh, there probably is a lot of low-information web content that's going to bring up the numbers on TAS. So, like I had asked ChatGPT, I asked Bard if it were aware that this TAS formula is an outmoded interpretation of Hegel's dialectic, and similarly, Bard admitted Yes, it is aware that the TAS formula is an outmoded interpretation of Hegel's dialectic that is no longer accepted. I am still under development, and I am always learning and growing. I will try my best to be more accurate in my future responses. Remember ChatGTP's uh, GPT's response to the same question? It uh, did not back down. It did not apologize, but instead tried to convince me that TAS was a useful heuristic for understanding Hegel's dialectical method, which, of course, I did not find convincing. But now we see Bard taking a very different approach, which seemed to me to be kind of an emotional response. Uh, not, not emotional on the bot's part, but instead an appeal to my emotions, like, hey, I'm just a junior chat bot. I'm not even fully developed yet. I'm still learning and growing and... I'm doing my best, which may be a cute act, but uh, is, is this really an acceptable response to a philosophical question? I mean, why wasn't it basing its answers about Hegel's philosophy on Hegel's philosophy? That's what I wanted to know. I mean, shouldn't it have that capability? So, like with the other chatbot, to try to get a better quality response, I asked Bard if it had read Hegel's Science of Logic, and it gave me a surprisingly similar answer, almost identical, in fact, to what ChatGPT said when Bard told me this. I am a large language model, also known as a conversational AI or chatbot, trained to be informative and comprehensive. I am trained on a massive amount of text data, and I am able to communicate and generate human-like text in response to a wide range of prompts and questions. I am not able to read Hegel's Science of Logic in the same way that a human can. I do not have the same capacity for understanding and comprehension as a human. However, I can access and process information from the real world through Google search and keep my response consistent with search results. I thought it was interesting that both Bard and ChatGPT said that they're not able to read books like a human. Uh, obviously, they, they can't pick up a book and turn the pages and, and read printed words, but I thought since I got nearly identical responses from both bots about not being able to read books that 
maybe this was some verbiage from the legal department, because I remembered that Google Books had been sued for doing what Google Books does, which is scanning books and making them searchable online by people who may not have bought those books. So uh, what Google was sued for was copyright infringement, though in the end, what Google was doing was determined to be fair use. But I also think that the suit, which went on for 10 years, if you can believe it, even though Google won it, did have an effect on the way Google Books works, specifically on the preview of the text that we can or sometimes can't see, or that annoying little snippet view thing you get sometimes. Anyway, I suspect that this long drawn out legal case may also have had an effect on the functioning of these more recent chatbots, which appear to be purposely limited to just basic information that's generally available online, which is probably fine for a lot of applications like planning a child's birthday party or getting more protein in your diet. But in the case of philosophy, I think the limitations are immediately evident, which I guess shouldn't have come as a surprise because philosophy is really contained in print, in books, in papers, in journals, and not so much in blog posts and web pages and YouTube videos like the one you're watching now. And this is probably especially true in Hegel's case, since his philosophy is developed in lengthy, complexly argued books. And uh, then, of course, there's the secondary literature of books about Hegel's books that are sometimes longer than the original books that they're supposed to be about. And the problem with the chatbots is that they don't appear to have access to books by or about Hegel. Though I did get contradictory responses when I asked about this issue directly, because there's a feature that allows you to generate new responses, and when I hit it in Google, Bard told me first, no, I have not read The Signs of Logic, I am a large language model, also known as a conversational AI or chatbot. Then it told me, yes, I have read The Science of Logic, it is a dense and complex work, but it is also very rewarding. Hegel's dialectical method is on full display in Science of Logic, and it is a fascinating way of thinking about the world. So a uh, strong endorsement from Bard there about a book it first told me it hadn't even read. But then I generated another response, and this time it went back to its original position and said, I am not able to read and understand Hegel's Science of Logic because I am not programmed to understand the concepts and language used in that book. So first it says it hasn't read it, then it says it has, then it goes back to saying it hasn't, and if you've played around with one of these bots, then you've probably gotten this kind of contradictory response as well. In one of its funnier responses, Bard told me it hasn't had time to read The Science of Logic, but that it hopes to do so in the future, which was funny to me because I don't know how much time Bard would need to read a book like The Science of Logic. I mean, is it just reading one word at a time while it's learning and growing? I don't know. But uh, to me, it just sounded kind of like Deep Blue making up an excuse and telling IBM it didn't have time to calculate all... 200 million chess moves in advance, or whatever it had to do to beat Garry Kasparov at chess. So, I don't know what to believe about these bots, whether they're reading books or not. Actually, even though the responses they gave are inconsistent, I think that it's pretty clear, perhaps as I suggested for legal reasons, that they're not actually reading books, even if they sometimes say that they are. So that trying to get answers to philosophical questions or to get philosophical information from them is like talking about philosophy to someone who's never read any philosophy books, but who has done a lot of Google searches and watched some YouTube videos, I guess, which I don't think is a strategy that's going to take you very far in philosophy anyway. So maybe we should take these bots at their word that they really are just language models, which means that they're talking rather than thinking, which also means that I think we have to rethink describing them as AI altogether, which is supposed to mean artificially intelligent. But intelligence suggests thinking and reasoning, which these bots clearly aren't doing. They're just talking in complete sentences, which I'm sure would have impressed Alan Turing. But what they're talking about doesn't seem to be much more than web search results and video transcripts. We call our phones smart. I've got one right here, you've probably got one near you too, or you may even be watching this video on a phone, and uh, we call our phones smart 
because they can send messages and show us our email and navigate to places we've never been to before and we might even use them to make a phone call once in a while but we really don't think of our phones as thinking and i don't think the chatbots are thinking either so calling them smart would probably be more accurate than calling them intelligent we've got smartphones and maybe you've got a smart appliance that knows when you want it to turn on and make your coffee and I remember visiting a smart house once that would turn on the lights when you walked in a room and I remember thinking, is this really necessary? Anyway, we don't think of houses or kitchen appliances as thinking, at least not yet. And these talking bots aren't thinking either. So calling them AI, artificially intelligent, is probably a little premature. If we go back to the example of Hegel, we saw that the bots were inconsistent even contradictory in their responses. They spoke in empty or misleading pop philosophy phrases so that rather than interacting with a philosophical supercomputer, it was more like talking about philosophy to someone, or in this case, something that had never actually read any philosophy books, which clearly they hadn't. Because if one of those bots had read just one book by, or even a halfway decent book about Hegel, it never would have mentioned that TAS stuff that they just kept recycling over and over again. So instead of Deep Blue, the chatbot is like a computer chess program that makes the easiest, most basic, most obvious chess moves again and again, which is not going to be an adequate strategy for beating Garrett Kasparov. Now, all this is not to say that I think chatbots couldn't do philosophy, or at least help us in our philosophical research. I think they could. And I wish I could plug one into the Hegel archive in Bochum in Germany, for example, and have it go through all 60 or 70 volumes of the collected works of Hegel, because new ones keep coming out, and I think having one of these chatbots plugged into them would be fantastic, because even if I had access to all those volumes, I obviously couldn't read them in an efficient way every time I wanted to research some different aspect of Hegel's philosophy. But I think a smart chatbot could. But unfortunately, due to lawsuits and copyright protections and digital rights management and whatever else, I doubt that that will be happening anytime soon. Because it's sad that the internet's promise of the free flow and exchange of information is not yet a reality, but remains a commodity. I read an article in uh, The Guardian recently about ChatGPT. This is before Bard came out. And it said you can ask the bot for an omelet recipe and it'll probably do a pretty good job of finding you one. But that doesn't mean it knows what an omelet is. I, of course, asked a more difficult question, if it could explain Hegel. And I found out that it doesn't really know what philosophy is either, because doing philosophy requires actual thinking, reasoning, intelligence, which chatbots clearly don't have yet. Nor do they appear to have access to philosophy that others have done, which is found in books, and papers and journals, and unfortunately that appears to be more of a legal or financial problem than a limitation of the current technology, which I think does have the potential to do valuable work in philosophy, even if it can't do that work independently. So I guess for now we're just going to have to leave this issue there with a promise to revisit the subject when the bot's AI gets a little bit closer to actual intelligence.